In this lesson, we'll discuss the basics of stoichiometry. Please have your note sheet and calculator handy. The term stoichiometry derives from Greek, stoichian for element and metron for measure. And so what we're looking at is uh, relationships between quantities of reactants and products in a chemical reaction. The quantity that we're going to look at specifically is the mole. The mole is what we used in chemistry to talk about quantity. So if you remember, the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation can represent a mole ratio. In this equation, one mole of nitrogen is to three moles of hydrogen is to two moles of ammonia. Stoichiometry looks at the relationships between quantities of reactants and products by using this idea of a mole ratio. Now what if we didn't have one mole of nitrogen? What if we had five moles of nitrogen instead? We can use stoichiometry to predict how many moles of hydrogen would be reacted and how many moles of ammonia would be produced. We'll look at the five moles of nitrogen that we have and we'll use our coefficients to look at the ratio between reactants and products. So instead of one mole, we have five moles. So one times five will give us the five moles. So let's do the same thing to the hydrogen and the ammonia. Three times five is 15 and two times five is 10. So using stoichiometry, we could say that 15 moles of hydrogen would be reacted and 10 moles of ammonia would be produced if we had five moles of nitrogen instead. In the next example, um, we have six moles of hydrogen instead of three in the balanced chemical equation. Well, three times two is six, so let's do the same thing uh, to talk about the nitrogen and the ammonia. So for the nitrogen, one times two is two, and for the ammonia, two times two is four. So if we had six moles of hydrogen instead of the three moles in the balanced chemical equation, uh, we would need two moles of nitrogen to react and four moles of ammonia would be produced. So once again, this is stoichiometry, relating quantities, moles of reactants and products to one another using the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. So now let's do some sample problems. Magnesium will react with hydrochloric acid to produce magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. How many moles of hydrochloric acid are needed to completely react 4.5 moles of magnesium? Well, if you remember what we just discussed, the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation represent mole ratios. When there's no coefficient written, remember it's implied that it's a 1. Now we're going to set up these little BCA charts. B for before, C for change, and A for after. So before represents what we have before the reaction starts. Change represents how everything changes in terms of quantity during the chemical reaction. And after represents what we have left over after the reaction is complete. So before the reaction starts, it says that we have 4.50 moles of magnesium. I'm going to write 4.50 underneath the magnesium. It doesn't say how much hydrochloric acid we have to start with, so you can either leave that blank or put a question mark. And then before any reaction starts, you have zero moles of product. So I'm going to put a zero underneath each substance that is a product. Okay, so we want to completely react 4.50 moles. So during the reaction, how is the amount of magnesium going to change? Well, we want to react it all. And so we're kind of going to set up a little equation here. Before we have 4.50 moles, then during the reaction we react it all, so we subtract it, and then after the reaction is complete, we hopefully don't have any leftover. So now let's think about the question. 
how many moles of hydrochloric acid are needed to completely react with the 4.50 moles of magnesium. Well, here's where uh, looking at the coefficients comes in. It is a 1 to 2 ratio for the magnesium to the hydrochloric acid. So instead of a 1, we're going to talk about 4.5 moles, so times 4.50. And then we'll do the same thing. 2 times 4.50 is 9. So we don't know how much hydrochloric acid we start with, but we know that 9 moles needs to react to react all of the magnesium. And we probably don't know how much is left over, so I'm going to put a question mark there. But now we've done enough work to answer the question. How many moles of hydrochloric acid do we need to react 4.50 moles of magnesium? Well. 9 moles of hydrochloric acid are required. Now I am going to go ahead and fill in the rest of the chart even though um, it's not part of the question. With coefficients of 1 on the magnesium chloride and the hydrogen and a coefficient of 1 on the magnesium, all of these have the same number in the change. But for products, we're adding. So 0 plus 4.50 is 4.50. And the same for the hydrogen. So if we had any questions about the magnesium chloride or the hydrogen, we certainly could answer those questions as well. In the next example, we want to know how many moles of hydrogen gas will be produced if 2.50 moles of calcium hydride react according to the following equation. So we have 2.50 moles of calcium hydride. I'm going to write that in underneath the calcium hydride. We don't know how much water we have to start with, so I'm going to put a question mark. But for products, we know we always start with zero products. Products cannot be formed before you put the reactants together. So once again, during the reaction, we're going to assume that all of the calcium hydride reacts until there's nothing left. Reactions will continue until you run out of one of the reactants. Now the question is about how many moles of hydrogen gas will be produced. So I'm going to skip over there to the hydrogen gas. It's a product, so it will be produced. I'm going to add. And uh, the calcium hydride has a coefficient of 1, and the hydrogen a coefficient of 2. So twice as much hydrogen as calcium hydride. We want to see that reflected in the change. So 2 times 2.50 is 5.00. So now we have enough uh, information to answer the question. There would be 5 moles of hydrogen gas produced. Now just for fun, I'm going to fill in the rest of my chart. The water has a coefficient of 2 as well, same as the hydrogen. So we would see a 5 here, but this time it would be subtracted because it would be reacting. And then for the calcium hydroxide, it has a coefficient of 1, just like the calcium hydride. So this is going to be 2.50 as well but added this time because it's being produced. And finally, we want to know how many moles of water will be produced if 0 0.400 moles of oxygen reacts according to the following equation. So we have 0 0.400 moles of oxygen. I'm going to put that underneath the oxygen. And we would want to react all of that until nothing is left. The question is about the water. Water is a product. In the beginning or before the reaction starts, we always have zero moles. And now we want to figure out how much would be produced. So here the coefficients are 15 and 6. Not the easiest relationship to work with in your head. So what you might want to do is set up a little proportion. So 
0, 0 is to 15, that's its coefficient, as x is to 6, that's the coefficient of the water. If you solve that, you get 0 0.160. So that's what I'm going to put in uh, for the water, and 0 plus 0 0.160 is 0 0.160. So how many moles of water would be produced? 0 0.160 moles. I would like you to try to calculate the number of moles of carbon dioxide that are produced and the moles of benzene that are reacted. We will go over those answers tomorrow in class.